Hey guys, I'm ZSH Plays, and yes, that is a flying animal in Planet Zoo. Today we're going to use the incredible walkthrough exhibits from the new Planet Zoo Twilight Pack to build a huge aviary through the Egyptian fruit bar. So we're here on a brand new map, one of the new maps that was added in update 1.11. A massive thank you to Frontier for giving me early access to this pack. Let's jump in and start building. The first thing to say is that these new walkthrough exhibits are absolutely incredible. When they announced them, I thought they were gonna be basically just an exhibit box, but bigger with a path through the middle of it, but they are much more interesting than that. The sides and the ceilings of them, you can choose whether they're solid like this, glass, mesh, or just completely blank, so you can't see that they're a box at all, which is what I think we've all been wanting for a very long time. I'll show you how we do that uh, in a minute, but let's get on to building the huge aviary that we're gonna put around the side of them. So what I'm gonna do is I've just put three of them uh, there for the moment in a sort of joined up path kind of way, and then we're gonna build a huge aviary that surrounds them. And then at the end of it, the boxes will be completely invisible. Just the little uh, nesting boxes and feeders and things like that for the bats inside. Talking of nesting, I'm pretty sure that we are gonna finally get birds in this game now because these will be absolutely perfect for the uh, for the birds. They're not free flying, uh, they are on sort of looped animations, but there are so many different animations and you can have so many bats in each one uh, that it looks absolutely amazing. I've had so much fun building this habitat. Uh, where are we, by the way? This is a brand new zoo. It's gonna be called the Moonlight World and it's gonna be a little sandbox zoo like the wetlands, which is gonna focus mainly on the animals from the new Twilight Pack, uh, but with loads of other nocturnal animals as well. It's based uh, loosely on the Singapore Night Safari, which is a really cool zoo and absolutely love to go to one day, uh, which basically only opens in the evening and through the night and there's predominantly nocturnal animals in it. So we're gonna have um, all the animals from the new pack, I think. Uh, but we are starting off with these bats because uh, I was just so excited when I opened the exhibit box for the first time and uh, realized how much more powerful than the normal exhibits it is. So we're building the aviary up here. Gonna give it a bit of a slope at the top of the roof just to make it look nice and interesting. And then, um, as usual, we will rotate it many, many times uh, until we have a nice looking aviary and it should look um, seamless inside so when you're walking through it you can't tell that there are any exhibit boxes anywhere or anything like that it just looks like one huge open habitat i'll show you in the cinematics at the end but it definitely works so i'm just going to copy a bit more of this mesh across to make sure there's no sort of gaps or holes in the aviary and then that's the uh, outer structure of it pretty much done. And I'm gonna start putting these Avery's exactly where I want them so they line up. Uh, they've got the um, like PVC strips as doors as well. And again, you can remove those. And that is a separate piece in the game now as well, which is so good. I've done a couple of zoo tours recently where people have built their own, which was really cool. But the um, sort of official in-game piece looks even better uh, and you don't have to bother building it. So <laughs> that's really good. And then I think I'm going to put an extra aviary in as well, uh, just so there's some more bats sort of off in the distance. And we'll get the path to go along there as well. We'll have a path running all the way through this with a couple of choices of where the uh, the guests can go. And I'm just marking out the center of the aviary so we can put a support in there and make sure none of the exhibit boxes are in the way of that. Now, let's take a look at what you can do with the exhibit boxes. So as soon as we put a bat in, they turn into mesh, which already looks awesome. And it's gonna be so good for building aviaries because you don't need to um, actually do much building uh, if you're wanting a sort of a square mesh aviary, bit of wood on it, and um, that's all you need. But uh, let's take a look at the, the thing that got me really excited. There's a little bat now. Um, let's select the um, exhibit box and then choose to get rid of the mesh. And there we go. We'll get rid of the doors as well because I'm gonna put uh, my own doors a bit further out of the aviary itself. But once we've got rid of those, it is invisible. We've just got these basic little perch points for the bats. And then you can choose loads and loads of new 
perch points, bat boxes, fruit stands, ropes, all kinds of stuff for them to uh, to fly between and roost on. And yeah, once we've got the rest of these sorted, it really is just going to be one huge aviary with a few little uh, perch points dotted about and we can get on with decorating it and making it look exactly the way that we want to do. So last one, there we go. Let's sort these paths out so we get the, uh, the wood chippings going all the way around. And then I'm going to put another path in as well so that the guests have got a choice which way to go round and it sort of stops congestion and things like that as well. So we'll join that back up with the main path here. And we're leaving a sort of blank space in the middle where we can put in some supports um, and we're going to fill it all in with a nice sort of jungle vibe as well. I'm uh, going to make an entrance now. So this is the separate uh, PVC door that I talked about. Uh, we'll have a couple of those to make an airlock. Uh, I'm going to make this twice as long as it looks here in the end because this was uh, a bit small once I looked at it properly. Um, but yeah, we'll fill it all in with mesh and then we'll get a nice sign up on the top of it with the flying forest name that I decided on. Any reason to get flying into Planet 2 is always cool. We use the um, plant boards, which I like to use as a backing for signs because they've got a really cool wood texture on the back. And then we'll put a big sign on that glows in the dark, uh, which will be kind of appropriate for this Twilight Zoo. And while I do that, a massive thank you to my subscribers. You are the reason that I've got early access to this pack. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing as always. Uh, and if you haven't already, uh, you know what to do. And if you want to see all the new stuff in the Twilight pack, all the new animals and pieces, etc., I've got an overview video of everything in the pack, which I'll link on the screen now. Uh, I'll link it at the end as well if you don't want to interrupt your viewing. Uh, we are going to be adding the other animals into this new Moonlight World Zoo as well. Really looking forward to that. Going to have a big um, North American section in between the entrance, which I'll show you in the next episode, and this Avery. There's the sign. This is made from the glowing font pack by uh, Sleepy Koala Girl. It's a great little font. It's flexi color as well, so you can choose what color it glows. Looks amazing at night. Uh, but yeah, so between here and the entrance, we'll have a North American area for the raccoon and the striped skunk we are going to have an african area and i think a european area maybe an asian area i've never really done a zoo by geography rather than by biome before um, so i thought that would be a cool idea and obviously there is a lot of nocturnal species in the game now so we should be able to make some really cool habitats in this zoo so what I'm going to do now is start decorating the inside of the habitat. I'm just choosing which ones of the sort of pre-made pieces to use for each exhibit. Uh, we'll put the central support in as well. Uh, we're going to put one of the new Twilight Pack pieces up on the roof at the end of the video as well, um, which I think it's from like a... Uh, supposed to be for a sort of a spooky castle, um, but it actually looks really cool topping off the dome of this aviary. And then we'll put a load of plants in. You can see a load of foliage all the way around the background of the zoo. And like I say, I'll show you uh, the rest of the zoo as it is at the moment um, in the next episode. But I've done what I always done, which is make a little area of plants that looks really good. Um, loads of different Asian plants. Here we go. And then you just drop that in and copy it all over the map, rotating it, making the odd little change so it doesn't look like it's been copy and pasted. Um, and yeah, it just really brings it to life in here. I love how big it looks, like the uh, how expansive, I think is the word I'm looking for, um, the whole Avery looks. And you really just cannot tell that there are little exhibit boxes in here. Um, I really hope they add that option to the standard exhibit boxes in the next update, because that would absolutely transform using those animals. You could start having, um, you know, iguanas in outside habitats or making sort of habitats or exhibits rather that look like they're really tiny in your reptile house or whatever but um these i think will keep me busy for a while anyway <laughs> i absolutely love this bat exhibit uh, it's in the update as well it's not just in the twilight pack although obviously you won't have any animals to put in it at this point the pieces in it are really cool and like i say with the um with the fact that it's got either mesh or glass by default you can use it to make really simple um, implied aviaries without having to do a lot of work which is a nice way to add some variety into your zoo. I thought I'd put a little bit of uh, a pond 
pond in here as well, just uh, just because it looks nice, really. Um, and IRL, I think the bats would uh, use that. They've got little water troughs which they drink from in the game, but I've seen in Africa, I saw bats dive bombing a swimming pool to have a drink. I hope it wasn't chlorinated, um, or they won't uh, they won't be enjoying that too much. Let's move on to the final stage, which is getting some lights and a few last bits and pieces in. Going to put a load of lights in. Obviously, lighting is going to be really important. This entire zoo will be set um, between sort of dusk and uh, actual night time, depending on you know what looks best. And that's the flying forest complete. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy the cinematics. I had so much fun building this. Um, I will see you again very soon for episode two of the Moonlight World. And there should be a new Planet Wild up by the time you watch this as well. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.